Hello students and welcome to section 1.7, the final section learning about limits before you take your test. In this part, we're going to be learning about infinite limits and limits at infinity. So let's get right into it. So first, let's talk about infinite limits. What is an infinite limit? So an infinite limit is a limit that results in infinity or negative infinity. And where x equals a, where a can be any real number. So what you want to think about is at a value, the graph is either going straight up or straight down. So let's look at these couple examples here. Let's look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the left. So f of x is on uh, the left side there. So 2 from the left side, we're going straight down. And so that's going to be negative infinity. And then now we're going to look at 2 from the right side. So 2 on the right side, we're going straight up, and that's going to be positive infinity. So now we're looking at g of x, uh, which is going to be the graph here on the right side. So what is it as x approaches negative 1 from the left side? So here's negative 1, and on the left side, I'm going down. So that's going to be negative infinity. And um, on the right side, I'm going up right there on the graph, and so that's going to be positive infinity. All right, so what we want to think about all of these, these are all vertical asymptotes. You can see that happening in the graphs. Either there's uh, some sort of vertical asymptote happening, it's either going straight up or straight down. Um, and so we're getting infinite limits. Uh, the result of our limit is coming out to either positive or negative infinity. So now let's look at limits at infinity. So a limit at infinity is a limit in which x equals, I, or x is approaching either negative or positive infinity. So you're looking really at end behavior, what's happening on the right side or what's happening on the left side. So let's look at these four examples. The limit of f of x is x approaches infinity. So that's what's happening on the right side here. And I'm approaching this asymptote, which is at two. So that's equal to two. And then the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity. So on the left side here, okay, I'm approaching uh, 2, but from the bottom side, but the limit is approaching 2. Now um, let's look at g of x, uh, the graph on the right side. The limit of g of x as x approaches infinity. So g of x as x is approaching infinity. It looks like it's going to keep going up in that direction. So that's going to get us positive infinity because the result is never going to stop increasing. So that's going to be positive infinity. And now uh, limit of g of x as x approaches negative infinity. So what's happened on the left side? So on the left side, it's just going to keep going down um, without end. So that's going to equal negative infinity. So what, what kind of things that are happening at limits at infinity? Well, we're either getting horizontal asymptotes or we're getting something like slant asymptotes. So those are going to be very important as we continue to tackle this section on infinite limits and limits at infinity. Let's keep going. So now that we've done some of uh, the problems graphically, let's do it with some more uh, calculus analysis that we've learned previously. So let's look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. First, we got to factor that numerator. So 2 times 6, I'm getting 12. All right, and two values that combine to be 12, they get me 7. That's going to be 4 and 3. Divide them both by 2. OK, so in my numerator, let's see. I'm getting the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And in my numerator, I'm getting, um, let's see, 4 divided by 2, that's x plus 2. And 2x plus 3 for my next one. And then in my denominator, it's a difference of square. So I get x plus 2 and x minus 2. So what I see here is that the x plus 2s, those divide out. And um, OK, so I'm left with the 2x plus 3 and the x minus 2. So as I do some numerical analysis of this, um, well, what's going to happen? So I want to think about values that are left of 2, so something like 1.99. And I'm going to substitute that into my result. So 2 times 1.99 plus 3 all over 1.99 minus 2. 
And I want to look at the signs. So two times about two, that's going to get me positive plus a number that's still going to be positive. And then in my denominator, I'm getting 1.99 minus two. So that's going to get me a negative value. So here's the analysis. That's the numerical analysis I would need to show here. And so now the limit, what this is coming out to be is it comes out to be equal to, so positive over negative, so positive over negative, that's gonna get me negative, so negative infinity. And that's going to uh, be confirmed in the result from the graph that we saw on our previous page. So now let's look at it when um, the limit as x approaches two from the right side. Well, I've already done um, the factoring, so I don't need to do it again, so I'm just gonna rewrite it. The limit as x approaches two from the right of 2x plus 3 over x minus 2. And so again, I'm going to do the same numerical analysis. Uh, but this time, a value greater than 2, so 2.01. So 2 times 2.01 plus 3 all over 2.01 minus 2. Well, in the numerator, it's all positive. So I'm going to get a positive up there. And in my denominator, 2.01 minus 2, I get a very small but positive number. So positive over positive, I'm getting positive infinity. And again, that's confirmed from our graphical analysis that we previously did on the last page. Looking now at g of x, we can see that uh, we can factor this as well. Let's see what happens when I do factor, though. Uh, so where this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of the numerator cannot be factored, so it's still x squared minus x plus 1, but my denominator can, 2 times x plus 1. So that doesn't really help too much, um, but I can still do the numerical analysis. So negative 1 from the right, so values to the right of negative one, that'll be something like negative 0.99. So let's substitute that in. So negative uh, 0.99 squared minus negative 0.99 plus one, all over two times negative 0.99 plus one. So let's see what happens here. So I get that negative 0.99 right there squared. Anything squared comes out to be positive, so that's getting positive. Minus a negative, that's plus. So positive, positive, plus another number, so that I'm getting a positive number in my numerator, no matter what. And then in my denominator, uh, negative 0.99 plus 1, that's a positive value, uh, times 2, so that's still going to come out to be positive. So our result is positive over positive, which is going to come out to be positive infinity. We're going to do a very similar thing um, in our final part right here, where the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. So the same numerical analysis. And um, so I'm going to use this some negative 0.1, negative 1.01. There we go. Uh, so negative 1.01 squared minus negative 1.01 plus 1 all over 2 times negative 1.01 plus 1. Let's see what happens here. So um, in my numerator, it's a negative value squared, so that's positive, um, minus a negative, so that's plus. So positive plus positive plus positive. I'm getting a positive number in the numerator. And then in my denominator, let's look at that one section, that negative 1.01 plus 1. I get negative 0.01 left over. So I get a negative times two, which is going to come out with a negative value. And I don't really care what the exact value is. I just, I'm just thinking in my head, a negative times a positive is a negative. So a positive divided by a negative, I'm gonna get a negative value out of this coming out to be negative infinity. So looking at this part, graphically, an infinite limit will always yield a vertical asymptote. So in pre-calculus, we discovered through observation that such uh, through observation that such a graphical property existed when a factor in the equation would not factor out. 
So from this point forward, this is not going to be a viable justification for the existence of a vertical asymptote. So if that's not going to work, what will work? Well, we're gonna have to bring in limits. So let's say this, x equals a is a vertical asymptote of f of x if and only if the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals positive or negative infinity. So as x approaches a from the left side or the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right side equals positive or negative infinity. So now let's look at a true example of this. So first, when I notice h of x, um, I'm, I'm looking to see if I can factor anything. So here's h of x, and I can factor this. The factors come out to be uh, 2x plus 1 times um, x plus 3, all on x minus 1, x plus 3. So what I notice is that the x plus 3s divide out. So I want to prove that a uh, vertical asymptote exists using my limit definitions here. Since I see that something could be happening at positive one here, well, let's look at it from the left side. All right, so let's look at one from the left side. That's gonna be 0.9 I can use. And what I'm going to do is go, okay, two times 0 0.9 plus one over uh, 0 0.9 minus one. And let's look at what the signs do, okay? So the signs in my numerator, I'm gonna get positive, and in my denominator, it's gonna be negative. So let's say, okay, the limit of h of x as x approaches one from the left side uh, is going to come out to be negative infinity. So then, well, that's still not enough. I need, to, I need to actually write it out. You need to be able to write this out. So since the limit of f of x as x approaches one from the left side equals negative infinity. So since that is true, since that's been proven, then x equals one is a vertical asymptote. So that's one way that you can prove that there's a vertical asymptote here. Another way you can prove it is to do it from the right side. So let's look at this from the right side. So I'll, I'll go two times 1.1 1 .1 plus one over 1.1 1 .1 minus one. And what I'm gonna get is positive over positive here. And so now, since I do it from the right side, I'll get the limit of h of x as x approaches one from the right side is equal to positive infinity. And uh, I, can, I can use that same argument here. So since the limit of f of x as x approaches one from the right equals infinity, then x equals one is a vertical asymptote. So that's a couple of the ways you can do it in this case. You don't need to do both. You only need to pick one when you're doing this. So keep that in mind. It only matters that you do one of these, either the left side at a point or the right side. But you do have to be able to factor these rational functions beforehand. All right, so I hope this lesson really helped you out. Uh, if you do need any help, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches. Hey,